Hi, I am Tapushpal from Indian Institute of Technology, Kharagpur. Today, I will be presenting our work, Compact Adaptivity Secure FE for Attribute Weighted Sums from Kelly. This is a joint work with Potishtattu from NTT Research. And this work is done during my internship at NTT Research. In Functional Encryption Scheme, there is a set of authority who generates master secret key and a master public key. Using master public key, an encryptor encrypts messaging and generates a ciphertext city. The decryptor who wants to decrypt the ciphertext city, where is a functional secret key SKF corresponding to the function A to the central authority? The central authority will generate a secret key SKF and gives it to decryptor. Having SKF, the decryptor can now decrypt the ciphertext city and learns function of the message in. The security of function encryption scheme is defined in two models. First one is indistinguishable device security model. In indistinguishable security of function encryption, the adversary submits two pair of challenge messages M0, M1. In the challenge phase, it cannot distinguish between encryption of M0 and encryption of M1, given the fact that all the functional secret keys is KFI corresponding to the function FI that adversary has queried satisfies the fact that FI of M0 equal to FI of M1. Adversary can query multiple number of six such secret keys. If the number of secret keys is, uh, is priori bounded, then we call the scheme bounded collision resistance. And if the adversary is allowed to submit any polynomial number of secret key queries, then we call the scheme unbounded collision resistance. Simulation security of function encryption is defined by two worlds. First one is the real world, where the challenger runs all the algorithms honestly. Second one is the ideal world, where the challenger runs the simulated version of the algorithms. The adversary submits the single challenge message during the challenge phase. The challenger will now compute the challenge ciphertext using the challenge message M in the real world. And in the ideal world, it uses the functional values of the messaging for all the functions that adversary has queried for the secret key till now. For the post challenge secret key queries, the challenger can use the functional values directly during the key generation process. The adversary will not be able to distinguish between the real and the ideal world. The simulation security captures the fact that the adversary can learn only the functional values from the challenge cipher text for all the functions that it has a secret key. Both indistinguishability and simulation security are further classified into selective, semi-adaptive and adaptive security notions. I will discuss those notions in simulation security setting. In selective uh, simulation security, the adversary will submit the challenge message in before seeing any public parameter. It can also query for many functional secret keys. The adversary should not be able to distinguish between the real and the ideal world. In semi-adaptive case, the adversary can see the master public key before choosing the challenge messaging. In adaptive simulation security, the adversary is allowed to query some functional secret keys before choosing the challenge message. It can also query for some functional secret keys after seeing the challenge ciphertext. What we can see now that selective security is seems to be weaker than semi-adaptive security and semi-adaptive security is weaker than adaptive security. And in all such cases, simulation security implies indistinguishable security. In this paper, we construct function encryption scheme for attribute weighted some functionality introduced by AGW20. In this functionality, the message aim consists of two parts. First one is the public part, which is XI. And the second one is the secret part, which is JI. During decryption, the decryptor will learn the function of the messaging, which is as follows, summation over i, if x i transpose JI. If i is not a priori bounded, then we call the scheme unbounded slot scheme. To get an idea about the significance of the functionality, I will discuss some special cases. Firstly, if f outputs a fixed vector, then this functionality will imply inner product function encryption. Secondly, if j is a payload and f is a boolean function, then this functionality will give you attribute-based encryption. 
Lastly, if f x is of the form y times g x y, where y is a fixed vector and g is a Boolean function, then this function has to be implied attribute based type a free, recently introduced in ACGU 20. There are some interesting applications of this functionality. I will discuss one of them. Suppose in a banking sector, all the employees are divided into certain categories. Job, JI, Age, AI, Experiments, EI, Salary, GI. Now let's say we want to compute the average salary of a certain group of people. Where JI is cashier, AI is greater than 40, and EI is equal to 10. That means your job, job is cashier, age is greater than 40, and experience is of 10 years. Then using the attributed sum functionality, we can calculate the average result. By calculating summation of i, f of j i a i e i times j i, where x i is equal to j i a i e i, which are public part of the message, and j i, which is salary, is the secret part of the message. AGW20 proposed function encryption schemes for attribute weighted sum functionality with some interesting features. First one is that their scheme supports unbounded slots for weight functions, which are arithmetic branch important. The cipher text size depends only on the private part of the message. And the security is based on the Kelly or MDT assumption, which are known to be standard assumptions. However, the security is based on only semi-adaptive simulation security. That means the scheme would not provide adaptive simulation security. As, we, as it seems that selective security is weaker than semi-adaptive security, however, due to GKW, 16 so selective security is equivalent to semi adaptive security. Although existing transformations from semi adaptive to adaptive security requires much more expressive functionality, in the sense that the underlying semi adaptive secure functional encryption scheme should support general circuits. Therefore, AGW20 proposed an open problem in their paper how to construct a fee for attribute weighted sum with unbounded slot for ABP, having compact ciphertext and adaptive simulation security based on standard assumptions. Now I will present some previous works and challenges in solving the proposed open problem. The left hand side of the screen, we have shown some ABEs presented uh, uh, in the context of partially attribute heading setting. AGR 17 proposed ABE for general policies with semi-adaptive simulation security. E17 proposed a much more efficient ABE for ABP policies with semi-adaptive simulation security. Whereas D18 proposed ABE for uh, ABP policies with uh, adaptive simulation security. In the right hand side of the screen, uh, we see some function encryption schemes for different functionality. Starting from ACGU20, where they proposed attribute based inner product function encryption schemes where the policies are NC1 circuits, the security is based on indistinguishably based adaptive model. AGW20 proposed FE for um, attribute weighted sum functionality where the weight functions are arithmetic branching programs and the security is modeled as uh, semi adaptive uh, simulation security. Their scheme also supports unbounded slot. V20 proposed FE for quadratic functions with semi adaptive simulation security. Lastly, ALMT20 proposed FE for inner product function encryptions with uh, bounded collision and adaptive simulation security. So, what we can see is that achieving unbounded collision with adaptive simulation security for function encryption is really a challenging task, and till now we know it only for inner product functionality. In this work, we build a fee for um, attribute weighted sum functionality where the weight functions are ABP and uh, we propose the scheme in um, adaptive simulation security. First, we propose a one slot scheme, then we extend it to unbounded slot scheme with a small caveat, which I will explain in the next slide. Our scheme supports compact ciphertext, which means that um, uh, the ciphertext size will not grow with multiple occurrence of a particular attribute in the weight function. Uh, our scheme is based on Killin assumption, which is a standard assumption, and uh, it basically generalizes the 
framework given by LL20 from uh, ABE to FE, that means from um, payload hiding to partial attribute hiding setting. Also, we extend the indistinguish to the security of LN20 to simulation based security for our FE. I will first give the overview of our function encryption scheme um, before discussing uh, our main construction. So, we require two cryptographic tools. First one is information theoretic tool, arithmetic key garbling scheme, in short, AKGS, which is a particular type of randomized encoding. And the second one is uh, a computational tool, which is function hiding inner product functional encryption, in short, IPFE. Using AKGS and IPFE, we first construct a one key, one ciphertext secure, one slot FE scheme in the secret key setting. Then we extend it to a one slot FE scheme in the public key setting. However, for that we require a slotted version of the IPFE. I will discuss about the slotted IPFE in a bit. Then we extend our one slot one FE scheme into a one slot one EXT FE scheme, which is again in the secret key setting and it supports one key and one cipher text. So what is the EXT FE functionality? The secret key is generated for a function and a vector y and the ciphertext is generated for a vector x which is public and a vector z concatenation concatenated with a vector w which are secret. The decryption will recover fx transpose z plus y transpose w. Then we extend this one slot one extf scheme uh, to a full fledged one slot extf scheme using the same idea that were involved in the transformation of one slot one FE to one slot FE scheme. That means we require slotted IPFE. After that, we use the transformation given by AGW20 with a little modification to get our unbounded slot FE scheme in adaptive simulation with security. Here I would like to mention one thing is that our one in our one slot FE scheme adversary can query any polynomial number of secret keys both before and after the challenge ciphertext. Whereas in, the, in our unbounded slot scheme, adversary can query uh, a priori bounded number of secret keys before challenge ciphertext. And after challenge ciphertext, it can query any polynomial number of secret keys. I will discuss the notion of arithmetic key garbling scheme. The garbling function takes a function f and a secret beta as input where f is an abp from jp to the power n to jp z and x are variables and r belongs to jp to the power n is the randomness the garbling function outputs level functions l1 l2 ln plus 1 suppose these level functions are known for some particular values of x and z the level values are l1 to up to ln plus 1 these level values are now fed into some eval algorithm which takes input f and x and outputs the functional value jdfx plus beta. In simulation security, the simulator takes the input f, x and the functional value jdfx plus beta and outputs a simulated level, uh, a set of simulated levels l1, ln up to ln plus 1. These level values are identically distributed with the uh, level values output uh, by the Garvel algorithm and we call it simulation security for AKGS. I will discuss some properties of linear function, uh, linear properties of the level functions. Firstly, Li is linear in X, that means if we take inner product of Li and 1 comma X, it will be the level, uh, it will be the level value of uh, that particular level Li. Li is also linear in x, z and r and in particular ln plus 1 z is equal to z minus of rn where rn denotes the mth com component of the vector r. Eval algorithm is also linear in the level values l1 to up to ln plus 1. In order to prove the adaptive uh, security of ABE, ln20 introduced piecewise security notion for AKGS. It has two notions, reverse sampling and marginal randomness. Reverse sample algorithm takes input the level values L2 to up to Ln plus 1, F, X and the functional value Zfx plus beta and simulates the first level value L1. 
such that the set of level values L1 dot to L1 plus 1 is identically distributed uh, to, uh, with the level values output by the garbage. This property is called level, uh, reverse sampling. In the second property, given the level functions for j greater than 1, lj plus 1 to up to ln plus 1, we can actually sample the j level function lj uniformly at random. This property is called marginal randomness. LL20 also showed that the partial garbling scheme of IW14 is an AKGS with piecewise security and piecewise security implies simulation security. In inner product function encryption, the key generation algorithm takes input a vector v and outputs the secret key skv. The encryption algorithm takes input a vector u and outputs the secret key ctu. The decryption algorithm decrypts the ciphertext CTU using SKV and outputs the end product between U and V. In terms of security, given a set of secret key ciphertext uh, distribution for beta equal to 0 and beta equal to 1, these two distributions are computationally indistinguishable given inner product of UI0 and VJ0 is equal to inner product of UI1 and VJ1 for every IJ. This is called the function hiding security of IPFE. For our work, we have used IPFE in pairing group model. That means the keygen and encryption algorithm can take the vectors in the power of the source group G2 and G1 respectively. The decryption algorithm uses the pairing operation E and outputs the net product U, V in the power of the target group. We now discuss our one slot one if scheme. Suppose we have a function f which consists of uh, at n prime number of abps ft, where t runs from 1 to n prime. Now we garble the function zt times ftx plus beta t, where zt and x are variables and beta t are secret. And rt is the randomness used in the garble algorithm. And beta t are chosen such that summation of beta t is equal to 0. The Garbell algorithm outputs the level functions L1t to up to Ln plus 1t. We consider two IPFE schemes. The first IPFE used is used to hide the uh, first n level values and the second IPFE is used to hide the n plus 1 at level value. First IPFE using the first IPFE we compute say the secret key corresponding to the level functions Ljt for j runs from 1 to n. And using the second IPFE, we compute IPFE secret key corresponding to the vector at t comma 1. While generating ciphertext corresponding to the vector x comma z, we use the first IPFE to compute an IPFE ciphertext for the vector 1 comma x. Using the second IPFE, we compute an IPFE ciphertext for the vector minus 1 comma z t. Now, if you decrypt using the first uh, IPFE, then we get to know the first m level values L1t to up to Lnt. And if we apply the decryption algorithm of the second IPFE, then we get to know the m plus 1 level value, which is Zt minus Rtm. Now, since we have all the level values in the power of the target group, we can apply the eval algorithm. And since eval algorithm of AKG is is linear in the level values therefore we can compute the linear operation in the power of the target group so each ft will give zt times ftx plus beta t and if we multiply all these related terms we learn fx transpose of z now recall that our one if scheme is only secured for a single secret key since our goal is to prove adaptive simulation security, we assume that the adversary is submitting the uh, uh, secret key before challenge ciphertext. The proof of our one slot one fe scheme is inspired by LL20, where we have used pre-image sampleability technique along with the piecewise security of APGS and function hiding security of IPFE. The one fe scheme already supports multi secret key and single cipher text since akgs is insecure for multiple evaluation for that we first introduce a random 
element is into the ciphertext vector. Then we move this random element is to the secret key vector using ITF security. Now using DDH, we can argue that the label functions are randomized. However, if you look at the decryption and uh, procedure of the functional encryption scheme, then the value S is multiplied with the term Jt FTX plus beta t. Since this value S is not available to the decryptor, the decryption algorithm will not be able to output FX transpose Z. For that, we use additional vector A. We are now garbling the uh, function Jt times A iota times FTX plus beta t iota, such that summation of beta t iota is equal to 0 for each iota. We compute additional IPv secret key for the vector a comma zero, and the j and for j equal to m plus one, we compute the IPv secret key corresponding to the vector r t iota m comma a. While generating ciphertext for the vector x comma z, we generate IPv ciphertext corresponding to the vector s comma s tensor four dot x and this ciphertext corresponding to the vector minus s comma s dot z t. Now if you look at the decryption, all the level functions are now the linear combination of the level functions Ljt iota with the coefficient vector s. Since the event algorithm outputs a dot s dot jt times ftx plus beta t dot s and a dot s is available to the decryptor and the fact that summation of beta t is equal to 0, therefore the decryptor can easily compute FX transpose Z. Another problem remains is that the encryption algorithm still uses master secret key of the IPFV. And our goal is to make the encryption algorithm public. For that, we use the notion of slotted IPFV. In slotted IPFV, vectors are divided into two slots. One is public slot, and encrypting in the public slot requires only master public key. And another is private slot, and encrypting in the private slot requires master secret key. And function hiding security holds only in the private slot. This is now the original scheme. I will now discuss the security proof of our one slot FE scheme. Hybrid 0 is the real experiment where all the algorithms are run honestly. In hybrid 1, we activate the um, private slot that means the encryption algorithm will be using master secret key and the, and the indistinguish will follow from the slotted correctness of the IPA frame. In hype 1, we see the inner product values are a dot s, ljt, x and minus rtm plus a dot s times jt. These inner product values will be now computed through private slots. So in hybrid 2, we make all the public, uh, public slots in the ciphertext zero and rearrange the terms so that the inner product between the ciphertext vector and the uh, secret key vectors remains unchanged. And hence, the security will follow from the function ID IPFE. Our next goal is to randomize the level functions using freshly sampled random values for RTM and A dot S. So in hybrid 3, we freshly sample those values and the uh, indistinguish should be followed from the MDDH assumption. In hybrid 4, we apply pre-image sampleability technique. The simulator knows the function value mu f corresponding to all the pre uh, cipher text key queries f. So it can solve the linear system application fx transpose z equal to mean f and get a dummy vector d such that fx transpose z equal to fx transpose d. We will use this vector d in ciphertext vectors. So we add additional hidden slots minus 1 dt minus 1 zt and the corresponding uh, vector elements in the secret key vector are all zero. Here we extend the dual system encryption abstraction used by LN20 into a three slotted encryption technique. The first slot is minus one JT, the second slot is minus one DT, 
and the third spot is minus 150. Our goal is to make all the pitch uh, cybertech secret key queries to interact with only the second slot that is minus 150. For that we consider only the first pre-challenge secret key query and we do it one by one through a loop. In the first hybrid of the loop, we copy the secret key elements from first slot to third slot. Since first slot and third slot are the same in the ciphertext vector, therefore the inner product will remain unchanged. Hence the indistinguished routine will follow from the function ID security of IPFE. Now at this stage, we will apply our one key one if scheme security in the third slot and make that the element in the third slot from jt to dt for that we need to introduce some additional hidden subspaces now you note know that all the other secret keys are interacting with minus 1 jt of the first slot and only the first pre challenge the secret key is interacting with the third slot. Since second slot and third slot are same, therefore we can copy the secret key vector element from third slot to second slot. Now the first pre-challenge secret key is interacting with the second slot, which is minus one dt. And we make the third slot back to the normal stage, which is minus one jt. We can repeat this technique for all other pre-challenge secret key queries one by one. And after this loop, all the pre-challenge secret key queries will interact with the second slot and all post-challenge secret key queries will interact with the first slot. And the third slot has worked for us as a temporary way station. Now we'll modify all the post challenge secret key queries. For the post challenge secret key queries, since we know the challenge message vectors exit, therefore we can directly put the label values into the cipher text. Next, we will use the simulation security of AKGS to simulate the values using the simulator. But we can see that the simulator still uses a tilde jt ftx plus beta t tilde for simulating the function ft. However, the final simulator should be using only fx transpose j. For that, we use a statistical transformation using beta t tilde. And we use uh, f1 to simulate the value a tilde fx transpose j plus beta 1 tilde and all other functions ft will simulate the value beta t tilde. Finally, hybrid 9 is our simulator where all pre-challenge secret key queries will interact with minus 1 dt and we have used the AKG simulator for the all post-challenge secret key queries. So till now what we have seen, using AKGS and IPFE, we construct one slot one FE and we convert the secret key one slot one FE scheme into a public key one slot FE scheme. How we can convert our one slot one FE to one EXT FE scheme? Let us see that. We recall that our one EXT FE scheme has, has this functionality as follows. The secret key is generated for a function f and a vector y. And ciphertext is generated for a vector x and a vector z concatenated with another vector w and decryption outputs fx transpose z plus y transpose w. Here we use the linear property of eval algorithm. We recall that eval algorithm is linear in all the level values. Our idea is to see that if we add any value new to the first level value l1t, then the value new will come out of the evaluation and we get jt times ftx plus new plus beta t. Our idea is to use this new to compute the term y transpose w. For that, for only the first level function, we compute IPV secret key for the vector l1t comma y. 
and during the cipher text generation process we compute the first ipv cipher text for the vector 1x comma w now you can see that the term y transpose w will be added to each level value l1t hence we need to secret share the value y transpose w through all ft so we introduce additional random element alpha t in the secret key generation process such that summation of alpha t is equal to 1 and new t is added to the value l1t where new t is equal to alpha t times y transpose w now if we multiply all the evaluated terms then we can get the fx transpose z plus y transpose w which is the required functional value using this idea we convert our 1 slot 1 fe to 1 slot 1 htfe and using the same idea involved in the transmission of 1 slot 1 fe to 1 slot fe we convert our 1 slot 1 htfe to 1 slot htfe finally we use agw20 um, transformation to convert our 1 slot htfe to unbounded slot fe here we note that adversary can only query q number of ciphertext secret keys. This is due to the fact that we are unable to solve the linear system of equation if the coefficient matrix is available in the exponent of a group. For that we have uh, introduced q mini additional hidden subspaces in secret keys and ciphertext to incorporate all the uh, pre ciphertext functional values into the challenge ciphertext. I will now conclude my talk. So in this work, we present a function encryption scheme for attributed weighted sum functionality, where the weight functions are arithmetic branching program. The security is defined by adaptive simulation based security model. Our scheme supports unbounded slot with compact ciphertext, which means the ciphertext size will not grow with multiple occurrence of a particular attribute in the weight function. Our scheme is secured based on Kaelin assumption. So from the technical ground, we generalize the LL20 framework from attribute-based encryption to function encryption or from payload hiding to partially attribute hiding setting. Our one slot scheme, the cipher text size grows with the size of private and public part of the message. And additionally, for our unbounded slot screen, the cipher text size grows with the number of pre challenge secret key queries. Whereas the semi adaptively secure FE scheme of AGW20, the cipher text size grows with the private part of the message. Therefore, it is an interesting open problem to investigate a function encryption scheme with adaptive simulation security where the cipher text size grows with only the size of the private part of the message. Another interesting open problem is to construct a function encryption scheme for general circuit or ABPs with say selective security and unbounded slot with compact ciphertext based on LW assumption. Thank you. If you have any question, you can discuss during